Saying goodbye to Ozark after four thrilling seasons was pretty hard, but it's possible to fill that murder mystery Ozark shaped hole in your heart with other similar TV shows. Here's a list of six shows that dive into the related topics like drug trade, double identities, problematic families, and why seemingly nice people choose to break bad. Queen of the South. Ozark falls precisely into the category of normal persons get caught up in crime, gets a taste for it, and then wants to be the king of the world. And that's the same deal with the Queen of the South. After her drug dealing boyfriend is killed, Teresa Mendoza, a poor Mexican woman, is forced to flee to America across the border, where she begins working for Camila Vargas, who's played by Ozark's very own Veronica Falcone, the estranged wife of the Mexican cartel's boss who took her lover's life. Teresa has a knack for drug distribution, which quickly makes her Camila's enemy, as well as the U.S. government's. She then teams up with others to help take down the cartel and begins her own drug dealer ring. So it's pretty much like Ozark, except the main character isn't a nerdy finance guy like Marty. The series is adapted from Telemundo's Spanish telenovela La Reina del Sur. Next is Breaking Bad. Watching Ozark without having seen Breaking Bad is like doing algebra without knowing multiplication. Ozark wouldn't even exist without this classic crime drama, which is considered by many to be amongst the top 10 series of all time. It's still number one in our books. The similarities are not coincidental. Brian Cranston plays a man thrust into the crime game by making and selling meth under dire circumstances after being diagnosed with terminal cancer and wanting to provide for his family. Many shows have since tried to emulate it, but the writing, directing, and acting on Breaking Bad remains untouched and superior. Breaking Bad has it all. Cartels, money laundering, a family on the edge, and hey, if you've already watched it, who doesn't love a good old binge rewatch? And then we have Bloodline. You know how in Ozark when somebody gets grotesquely blown up in an explosion, and then all of a sudden there's this gorgeous drone shot of the Ozarks, and you think to yourself, maybe Missouri isn't such a bad place for a vacation. Well, the series' stunning scenery is just as engrossing as a crime, and the feeling is all over Netflix's bloodline. In this case, the location is the Florida Keys, serving as the scenic setting that provides cover for corruption and criminality. Like Ozark, Bloodline is fronted by one of TV's great leading men, Kyle Chandler, who plays the local detective. John Rayburn, a member of a supremely messed up powerful family buried in secrets. What begins with family disputes ends up snowballing into crime and murder, but it's a creeping sense of doom and a picturesque place that will most remind you of Ozark. Up next, Narcos. If it's more the ruthless cartel killing from Ozark that you're after, and I mean, who doesn't love ruthless cartel killing, then buckle up because Narcos franchise on Netflix is loaded with it. The first season of the original Narcos, which debuted in 2015, followed the DEA's takedown of Pablo Escobar. The infamous Medellin cartel leader and the world's biggest coke dealer. While there aren't any white guys getting over their head in the crime world, unless you count feds, all the action, violence, and devious backstabbing you want from Ozark is all here. Another on the list is Good Girls. Christina Hendricks, Rhett, and Mae Whitman play ladies who heist in this comedy drama about three suburban moms who accidentally embark on a life of crime to support their struggling families. But new to the game of crime, they pulled in deeper than they ever imagined and ended up working for a dangerous drug dealer. It touches on themes common to Ozark such as how far you're willing to go for the ones you love. While the sense of constant impending doom is prevalent in the series, the show also gets lighthearted, so watch this if you're up for some laughs. And then, Inventing Anna. While Netflix hit limited series based on a true story doesn't feel much like Ozark, fans should watch it for Julia Garner. Ozark's Emmy-winning breakout star got her most popular lead role to date by playing Anna Delvey, the Russian hustler who made her way up to New York City's high society by convincing people that she was a German heiress worth millions of dollars, only to have her house of cards come crashing down when the bills were due. Inventing Anna allowed Garner to show off her range and Meryl Streep-esque talent for accents. And honestly, Anna Delvey is kind of like Ruth Langmore. They're both intelligent, ambitious young women whose outsider status prevented them from gaining money, respect, and power through traditional means. So then they do it on their own terms, illegally. Now in other related news, Ozark Season 4 ending and spinoff. In a recent interview with TV Line, Ozark's showrunner and executive producer Chris Mundy revealed that although an Ozark spinoff isn't currently in the works, it's an idea that he and his team have seriously thought about. According to him, it's definitely something that people have talked about a bunch, although nothing is definitive. He further elaborates how lucky he and the producers felt when people seemed to like the show, so there's obviously going to be more interest and incentive for them here. Keeping this in mind, Mundy discussed how a spinoff could use Ozark as a jumping point. He revealed there are still loads of ways to stay inside the show and revisit things, but also noted not everyone might be happy with a franchise growing without a particular businesswoman. A spinoff focused
focus and primarily on fan favorite Ruth Langmore, played by Emmy winner actress Julia Garner, would have been an obvious avenue to take. It seems like even the showrunner knows the people would have been happier if Ruth was still alive and out there. Oh, how we miss her. Next, how Ruth's demise was handled. Showrunner Chris Money revealed to Vanity Fair that the writer's room argued spiritly about which of the show's still standing characters, including the birds, would survive the finale. They had to consider the fact that so many people who crossed Marty and Wendy during their criminal descent wound up dead. R.I.P. Darlene. Ultimately, the writers wrote the finale in accordance with its season 4 credo, building a myth, creating a curse. Mundy promises that he and the Ozark writers did not go into writing the final season planning that Ruth would die. However, keeping her alive started to feel like something that the writers wanted, instead of what actually happened. He explained that they had always felt like there were no repercussions from anything. It's true because if you think about it truthfully, the way it worked with the Bird's relationship to the Ozarks and the people they came in contact with, including the Lanemore family, none of those people are still standing. Mundy explains that it just felt too clean to have everybody get a damaged but happy ending. Almost like a fairy tale ending to something that they were trying to make with a realistic perspective. In plotting out the death of such beloved character, it was certainly important to Mundy that her fate be self-propelled. So in the end, Ruth's death is a direct result of her decision to avenge Wyatt's death by killing Javi. Chris explained that he wanted all the characters to have active choices in the last seven episodes, pointing out that Ruth had an important decision to make after Javi killed her cousin Wyatt earlier in the season four. Ruth had the option to not go for revenge. She knew that if she did, it was going to unleash things that might end up getting her harmed. Well, that's exactly the route that the writers took with her character. Now she ended up getting shot, so there's that. Lastly, Julia Garner talks about season four's controversial ending. Though many fans are frustrated and infuriated with Ruth's death, our real-life Ruth Langmore might disagree. Before getting the script detailing how Ozark would end after nearly five years of runtime, Garner had already sensed that Ruth had reached the end of her road. While it must have been hard to digest, Julia had made peace with it, and she hopes fans do too. Speaking with time, the Inventing Anna star shared why she thought her character's story concluded the way it did. Garner revealed that she really thought Ruth died when Wyatt died. Her body was just there. According to her, Ruth wasn't going to voluntarily quit life, but she was so dead inside that if given an opportunity to die, she wouldn't say no. Julia continued that in the end. It wasn't her going over to death, but death coming to her. By the end of the season, she simply didn't care about living. She did what she had to do. She killed Javi, and after that mission, she was like a ghost. Poor Ruth. And that's a wrap for this video. Which of these shows are on your watch list after Ozark? What are you most looking forward to in the Ozark spinoff series? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.